So today I have an appointment at the Low Vision Clinic and the specialist hasn't arrived yet but I was just observing some of the devices that we may be using today. We certainly have a lot of magnification tools and classes and other interesting items that I hope he'll be testing out on me today to try and improve my vision and my quality of life. Hello, hello there. Uh, welcome to the home low vision clinic. Today we're out not to necessarily improve your vision. If that could be done, most of that work would have been done by the optometrist okay. before you came today. Mm -hmm. He's referred you to me today to see if we can help you to improve your quality of life. Okay. So we'll go through all the items that we've got here. Um, I'm not going to do necessarily work and find what the best equipment is for you today, but to give you some idea what sort of things you can get. Okay. All right. And what we have here is a near vision chart. Okay. Um, I know that the biggest problem for you is your near vision. Yes. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you some special glasses. And what these have got is no prescription in the distance yes. and just a reading addition in the bottom part. Okay. So what you'll find is that um, in this instance, it's a plus 250. Okay. 2.50 diopters. Okay. So what you'd find is that you'll need to bring the material closer to your eyes, mm -hmm. but you'll find that you can read smaller material than what you would normally be able to. Okay. So I'm just looking through the bifocal segment at the bottom. Is yeah, that correct? To do that, you, you lower your eyes and then raise your chin to you bring it into focus. Okay. So I can see some of the large print there. Can you see any of the smaller print with that? I think I can read about halfway down. This is innovative optical design oh, that adapts. Yeah. So that's one option. Mm -hmm. Now, if we found that they couldn't do any improvement with a pair of spectacles under normal circumstances, mm -hmm. something like this could be useful, but with you in use with a magnifying lens which we'll come to a bit later okay i think before we get to that i've just got a couple of different gadgets that are worth showing you mm -hmm. you wouldn't necessarily need any of these um your vision isn't bad enough for that okay but at least if you know they're available and then if you've got any friends that have got low vision you can inform them on some of the things that are available okay all right yeah so i'm going to start with one of the smallest of the gadgets now, if you have a look at that, what does okay. it look like? It looks like some kind of scanner. Well, what that is, is a banknote reader. Oh, right, yes. And how it works, I'm just going to get a banknote out. Um, it hasn't got batteries in at the moment, it's just a demonstration. Okay. But what you would do to read the banknote, you would slide it in across here. And that would read what banknote it is. Oh, is that another device you've got? 11.50 a.m. That's a talking alarm clock. All oh, right. That's so pretty neat. <laughs> right, so that would then read what banknotes you've got. Okay. And if you put two or three in, it will read how many. Oh, it actually counts the money. Yes. Right. So, so that you're well, I'm not, not that, going to be... I'm not that rich, to be honest. So I no, but it's when you go into a shop. Okay. If you go into a shop and somebody says that's £23, mm -hmm. you don't know whether you've given them a £20 or a £10. Okay. So it will read that for you. So that's £10. So you put another one in, that's another 10 So there's your 20 okay. And then your coins you can feel anyway. All right. Okay. Now, so that's your first gadget. I'm going to move that out of the way because we have got rather a lot of items. The next one, uh, you just heard the talking alarm clock mm -hmm. it's a specially designed alarm clock mm -hmm. that actually you've got the writing is on there but you actually put the time face down so you can't see it mm -hmm. you set the alarm set the and the 
the buttons are coded mm -hmm. so when you feel it you'll feel that the buttons all feel different so that you know which button you're touching okay. and also when you go to set the alarm always set the time so I've moved that up and So you know that you've done the alarm. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to turn that alarm off. Um, but to read it, you literally that black button on top. Eleven fifty-one a.m. And it'll tell you the time, so you haven't got to look for that. Okay. And it's very easy with the contrast of the white against the black. Yes. It's very easy to see where the button is to press and get right. the time. Okay. All right. Lovely. So that's a, Thank you. a nice gadget to have. Yeah. If your problem is trying to read and stay focused on a line, mm -hmm. you have this and you put this onto your page. Yeah. The best thing to do is put that down on the tray and then you place that down. And let's just say that because it, it, usually it's the smaller print where you'd struggle to focus mm -hmm. in one, one point. So this actually isolates a block of text. It does, yes. So it makes it so much easier to read it. Mm, so it cuts out all the peripheral. Yeah. There is another. There is another version of it, which will be good for when you want to look at a block. And a good example of that mm -hmm. is if we use this one. It's got the same gadget as on there, mm -hmm. but it's also got the bigger box. So if you wanted to look at a map, mm -hmm. and get focused on one specific point on the map you can use that okay i'm just going to make it a little bit closer so we have a map of london there and this is just helping me to focus my attention let's just try the smaller block focusing northampton rugby cambridge luton Rupert, swindon reading Brighton, Portsmouth, Bournemouth. Okay, so that does help. Yeah. With tracking and reducing peripheral distractions. You take the glasses off if you want. Okay. Because they're not they're not your prescription, so they're not going to help necessarily when it comes to the magnifiers. Okay, what do we have next? Right. So I'll just put them out of the way. Another gadget that we have, and people aren't aware of this, mm -hmm. but this is a low vision kettle. It needs batteries, otherwise I could demonstrate it for you. Right. But it, it shows whether the zero units, um, and how many basically, zero units liquid. Mm -hmm. It has a speaker on the top, mm -hmm. and what happens is you put the cold water in this jug, and then you put it on and it's, you put as much in as you can want you spin it and click it mm -hmm. and then when you put it on it is battery operated the batteries are underneath um, it will speak to you when it's ready the advantage of that is you don't take it off when it's hot you literally pour it from that mm -hmm. there's no lid on it and that's designed so that less risk of spilling when you're trying to remove or, or adjust a lid oh, that's good because I do like coffee yeah and that is one of the biggest problems there is another gadget which I don't have handy here that you clip onto the edge of your cup mm -hmm. and when you put the hot water into the cup as it goes to that level mm -hmm. it bleeps okay. so you can't overfill it hence scold yourself okay all right okay now, I'm thinking one other item before I go on to um, oh, there's a couple of more items. Sorry, you have a high visibility watch. This is also a talking watch. Okay. Uh, for people who can read the time, but they can see that time on there. Okay. They're very big numbers and they're illuminated. Yes. Yeah, so but you glad. press a button on the side and it will talk. Um, again at the moment this one is just a demonstration to show you what it's like okay so you won't get it to talk at the moment yeah. just have a look with the bifocal lenses okay, 
So yes, they have large, larger digits there than the standard watch. Okay, so that's definitely something I'd be interested in. Okay, thank you. The next item is polarized lenses. Okay. Now with a polarized lens, uh, what this does, this is the only type of lens that will block out 100% of horizontal glare. Okay. So if you're sat, if you're walking outside and glare is a problem, mm -hmm. you can completely reduce the glare. Okay. You may not feel like you want to wear it indoors mm -hmm. necessarily because it's a very dark lens indoors. Mm -hmm. And as you've already got low vision, you would struggle with it. Yes. Um, but so if you was looking light. towards the sunlight mm -hmm. and it said there's a reflection off a car windscreen as you're walking towards it mm -hmm. that would completely reduce the glare off that so this is going to be suitable for outdoor use Ma mainly outdoor use okay thank you and i have something here just a little bit unusual um, not everybody would need this, and but this is what you call a braille teacher. So if you're a novice and you want to learn braille, mm -hmm. you would use this to work out what the braille was. Now it takes a lot of practice, mm -hmm. and you would have this over the top, mm -hmm. and you would feel across, and you can feel the little bits mm -hmm. but it, like I said it would take a lot of practice we would tend to only give this to the very young okay. um, to try it out and, and those that really are desperate to learn braille mm -hmm. so it doesn't have to be um, somebody with low vision that uses this it can be somebody that wants to learn braille because they have a relationship with somebody that needs to understand braille or that can read braille already all right now let's come on to something a little bit more technical that was looking interesting yeah these are TV glasses and how they work you have a dial at the side mm -hmm. and that adjusts the, the lens. lens distance mm -hmm. the further away the lenses are apart the stronger the prescription so the more plus it's got and you can adjust each eye separately so we could have it all the way back to here mm -hmm. on one we could have it all the way back on both mm -hmm. but you might decide that you want to put one of them much closer together okay. because your eye isn't quite as bad okay. let me just do the description so now i'm going to be very blurred aren't i yeah And now you're taking the lenses further away, so you're going to make me even more blurred. Okay, so I'm just going to try and focus you now. So you need the lenses much closer together because I'm not far away. Oh, so it has a zoom in effect as well, and a yeah. zoom out. Okay, I think that's the clearest I can get it there. And these obviously have a so I've got a cord because you don't want um, to misplace them well you don't want to lose them you don't want them to fall off your face mm -hmm. and damage I guess these are very expensive they would be yes okay it's interesting isn't it you, very people don't realize you can get things like that thank you Now I'll move on to some handheld magnifiers and we've got several different types.
I'm going to start with this one, which is called a credit card magnifier. Mm -hmm. It isn't a credit card, obviously, but it's the size of a credit card. Okay. Now, this is two times magnification. Mm -hmm. And as you'll notice, it's a very flat magnifier. Yeah. Very lightweight. Yeah. And with this one, you need to hold it fairly close to your reading material. Mm -hmm. And then zoom in and out. You can zoom in and out, but you'll find that it's the magnifier that focuses rather than your eyes. So it doesn't magnify it a lot. It's only a small amount of magnification. Yes. But that should be enough in an emergency just to read some very fine print. Okay. okay. And what's fine print to one person might be um, large print to another. The next one is probably one of the most common types of magnifier. Mm -hmm. Now this one's quite a big lens. This one is two times magnification as well. It's quite heavy because it's a glass lens. Okay. This obviously the first thing I notice is the wider field of view. Yeah. Because it's a much bigger lens. Okay, so that's pretty good. I like the extra width and peripheral extension with this one. Although the strength could be a little bit better. Yeah, it isn't very it isn't very strong. Okay. If you had that same magnifier but with a much smaller lens, mm. you will get a stronger magnification. Okay. And you but you'll have a much smaller field of view. Okay. Now there is actually a method for using this magnifier mm -hmm. to get the best vision. Yes. And I'll show you how that is. Okay. So it's the magnifier I want. So to get the best magnification the best view out of this magnifier if you put your magnifier to the side against up to your eye and then twist it that will give you the best magnification it does mean you have to have the reading material closer mm -hmm. and that in general is what you do with any handheld magnifier you hold it nearer to your eye about the length of the magnifier mm -hmm. away from your eye and then bring the reading material into focus rather than the magnifier into focus. Okay. Now what I'm coming on to now are some more expensive type magnifiers. Now these are an aspheric lens. That means if you look it's got both sides can be used and it's bubbled at both sides. Mm -hmm. What that does gives you a, a larger magnification, but also it gives you a wider field of vision from the larger magnification. Okay. They do cost a lot more money to buy this type of magnifier, okay. but it's definitely more advantageous to you. The aspheric element is very unique and interesting with this one. It definitely gives you a wider field. Mm -hmm. This one is just a little bit stronger. It's the same magnifier but with a little bit more power. Does that mean I have to hold it closer? Well, you'll see this is so that you can see for yourself. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice the reading material is closer mm -hmm. to the magnifier to get the same response. So the stronger the magnification, the closer the material has to be. Yeah. And it also increases the retinal image size as well, I believe. Yeah. That's my optometrist type. Yeah. Okay. And here's another one that's just a little bit stronger again. Okay. And you'll notice this one's rectangular. So that means again that you've got a wider lens mm -hmm. so you could read the whole page without moving the magnifier. You'll notice now that you've got less movement on the magnifier yes. before it actually goes out of focus. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, so I can move this one much further away, much closer. 
Let's have a look at the back there. These are ideal for map readers, aren't they? Yeah. Have you got anything with a little bit of illumination? That's what I'm coming to next for, yeah. Okay. Right, so this one is, you'll notice now as I use some of the terms, this one is a 16 diopter magnification. Mm -hmm. That means oh, wow. for every four um, diopters of, of lens, it's actually one times magnification. So you've got four times magnification on that one. Okay. Now, by putting the light on, mm -hmm. it simulates daylight. It's an LED bulb. And so, because you've got the light, it's not directed at the lens, it's directed at the page. So, with uh, all the extra light, you've got much better, much clearer vision using that without having to use extra magnification. Okay, so this really does provide a lot more magnification than the previous handheld ones. Yeah, and although this one hasn't got the batteries in, mm -hmm. this one is a similar magnifier but with more strength. This one has got 28 diopters, so it's seven okay. times magnification. Seven it times. Hasn't, it hasn't got the batteries in though. Okay, so we'll just try with it. Okay, so this is for very fine work, I'm guessing. Yep. Okay, so this is for when somebody has very low vision. So have to be really close and the field of view is much less than previous magnifiers. Okay, you've got a little margin for error in terms of the distance the magnifier sits at. Very good for detailed work, detailed fine reading. Would jewelers use something like this? They would use a different type. They have one that connect, fastens up to the right. Okay. Um, I shall, next time I see you, I shall get some of them out to show you. So I have got some. Thank you. All right. Now this one again, again, it's got no batteries. But this one is even stronger again. This is a 50 diopter lens. 50 diopter. It's 12 and a half times magnification. And you have the screen cover to help protect it. Mm -hmm. And you would push up to turn the battery on, to turn the light on. It's an LED design, so it stays cool. And, it's, and it gives imitation daylight. But you see how close you have to have that to read just on the bottom one. Oh goodness. You have to almost touch the page, don't you? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's incredibly strong. Yeah. But obviously my working distance is very short. Yeah, so if you've got severe side tab anomalies, then that would be perfect. So with this, I can actually read some of the small print. We have easing them into the world of progressive lenses and even lower. So just blah, blah, from all purpose, progressive and occupational lenses. So that answers a lot of my problems there with fine reading, fine print reading. I'm going to show, uh, go back now to a non-illuminated magnifier, mm -hmm. and the reason, main reason for showing you this, this has got a two times magnifier here, mm -hmm. was the main lens, but on the handle it's got a four times magnifier, oh, right. which as you can see there's a massive difference in the size, but the aim of this lens is to um, to give you your normal everyday reading but then you come across the smallest print mm -hmm. which this isn't strong enough for mm -hmm. and you can although you have to read it across mm -hmm. what you're reading mm -hmm. you can read that okay so if you could read one of these lower ones okay but you've got a bottle of medicine yes the medicine bottles the print is so small mm -hmm. this might not magnify it enough okay but that would let's have a go 
Yeah, so this is very similar to one of the first magnifiers. That's right. But then you've got that extra bit on the handle. Okay. So if we go, so obviously I have to come closer. Oh yes, so that's almost a two in one. Yeah. It's very convenient. Let's just have a look through my left eye. Because my left eye is actually the weaker eye of the two. Can achieve some improvement through my weaker eye. That would be brilliant. Okay. Bogner Regis, Worthing, New Haven, Eastbourne, Hastings, Folkestone, Maidstone, Canterbury, Colchester. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now the next one, sometimes it's not convenient to have to hold on to a magnifier. Mm -hmm. So the, I'm first of all going to show you a couple of non-illuminated magnifiers that you don't have to hold on to. Okay. The first one is actually designed and it's really good for things like needlework or hobbies and crafts. So if you put that string over oh, so your So where you're using your hands for something else. Yeah. And then you put that against your chest. And now what you'll do is, let's, we'll presume that's you're doing some modelling or something, and you need to see that. Okay. So what you'll do, I'm going to move this tray away for a second. So you pull that underneath. So you could be working, you could be stood at a table, and you're working at the table. Mm -hmm. This will um, illuminate. I say illuminate, magnify, magnify yeah. what you're actually doing. Now you can actually see how it attracts the light to where the magnifier yes, is. Yes, it condenses the light. So, so it will make it brighter. Okay. And it know, will make it knitting or maybe even eating my dinner. It, yes. I can yep. actually see my margarita pizza. Excellent. And so, when somebody puts pepperoni on it, you'll see that there's pepperoni and go, oh no. <laughs> Now that's brilliant. Just where I was looking for something like this. All right. Now moving on to something else. So if we take that one off, it's again, it's not a strong magnification. No, it's not. No. It's quite a mild magnification. It's two times. Mm -hmm. Now we've got this one, which is a stand magnifier. Mm -hmm. With this one, you'd leave it on the table, and whatever it is you wanted to do, you would place underneath it so if we do that and you adjust the angle of the magnifier oh, okay. to bring it into focus to the angle that you're sitting at and okay. what you want to read if I just I didn't realize that was adjustable then. and that magnifier mm -hmm. is the magnification is set to the focal point Yes. of what you want to look at. Yes, so it's a fixed distance, isn't yeah. it? Okay. Very wild, uh, wide field of view, this yeah. one. Well, you can see the field of view mm -hmm. is according to the width of the frame. Yes. So what you put in that frame, you know you can read. Yes. Now the next stand magnifier, mm -hmm. you'll notice it's a lot smaller. Okay. This stand is set so it's exactly at the focal point. Mm -hmm. So when you put this on, you'll notice you can only read a small field, but you can read much or see much smaller items okay. using this. It's six times magnification and that's where the focal length is at the bottom of, from the lens to that the bottom of that stand so that's one advantage of having a stand magnifier mm -hmm. you haven't got to work out where the focal distance is it's there automatically oh yes I feel like I'm using a Ouija board <laughs> let's just have a look at the map again I just want to see if I can find some finer print so well the, the maps the A to Z's tend to have the smallest print that you'll get. 
-hmm. and it's all close together so it's where it all jumbles up so I can see the airport symbol I can see route numbers E5, E30 20 and I think that's some of the smallest print that's actually printed in this map single digit 9 Banbury Ebersham okay, Kenilworth Leighton Buzzard that's remarkable right okay. now we're going to come on to illuminated stand magnifiers mm -hmm. I'm going to start with some of the more simple ones actually well, the first thing I'm going to show you is that these handles are interchangeable so as we put this on this is a 3.9 times magnification mm -hmm. and it's also illuminated oh, wow. and again you place it onto the material mm -hmm. and you slide it across let's move this out of the way you can put this further on because you need to put the magnifier onto the table onto the reading material completely and if you have the handle on that keeps it at the right angle mm -hmm. and then you slide it across what you're reading I'm just going to try with them without the light so have much better contrast with the light yeah Designed to match your work habits and show a complete satisfaction by offering the optimal customised solution. Okay. Okay, it could be brighter. Could be brighter, I'd say. Very good. And showing you that, that's a 10.1 times. Uh, of, there's no batteries in that so okay. but it, it's really to see the magnification and you'll notice that the cup on there is much smaller yes and again that's to keep the focal distance at the right yes. position so and it's very much spot reading this one almost yeah so there's a lot more movement required Shamir, at 40 centimeters slash 16 inches excellent so that will show you that they're interchangeable mm -hmm. and that you get different magnifications here we have three different lenses that one's 10.1 times magnification mm -hmm. that one is seven times and this one is six times okay. and then of course one of them others that I showed you was 3.9 times but again they would attach to the handle and you'd use them the same way Excellent. All right, and now I'm going to come on to the last magnifier I've got on show. Now this is a very special magnifier. Actually, I'm going to start off with a different lens, a less powerful lens. This particular lens is eight diopters, so it's two times magnification, mm -hmm. and this is electric. It's not a battery one, it's an electric one, it's all okay. Access. Sorry, it's just off. Oh, there we go. Is it on? No, it's gone off again. Oh. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, this is brilliant illumination i've got it stretched too far i think there we go. now with this one you've got two different lenses mm -hmm. for magnification I'm, really i'm stretching it too far not to worry um but it's got different filters as well so if I take this lens off, mm -hmm. and you'll notice here, this one is a clear filter. But we also have a blue filter and a yellow filter. These can help where you've got different eye conditions. Mm -hmm. um, and they will give you a different light. For some people, it won't make any difference at all. But others, it will make a difference. 
Would these be good for things like macular degeneration? And they could well be, yeah. Right, I'll just hold on to this. Now you'll notice this is the blue. Mm -hmm. This is more like daylight reading. Yes. With a little bit more brightness, I'd say, than previously. Okay. And really, the one that makes the biggest difference is the orange lens. Oh yes, that makes a big difference. Yes, it's almost warmer, a warmer hue. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much. So hopefully you've got a better insight into this. Yes. And it shows that it's not straightforward it's quite a lot more complicated yes everybody has different needs mm -hmm. and these are just a small example of some of the things that can help to improve your lifestyle mm -hmm. so it might be that um, the only thing you want to do is you want to be able to make yourself a cup of tea when you want one mm -hmm. in which case we would be looking at the gadget to go on the cup and we'd be looking at the kettle yeah. The other thing that we would then do as well is to look at contrast for things like your cup and saucer, mm. your table, everything like that. So it might be that you put a dark cloth mm. over your table mm -hmm. and have a white placemat. And then you have um, a dark cup mm -hmm. because you like your tea milky, you'd put your mm. milk in first and you can see... Right how much tea you've got in your cup okay so even simple things like that mm -hmm. which we don't have to supply mm -hmm. or that we wouldn't need to supply i should say would help to improve your social life okay well thank you all right yeah.